Now, the, the fall happened on Mother's Day. Mother's Day of all days. My mom got the call at 4.30 in the morning. I don't think it was the call she was expecting. She was by my side in hours. I owe my life to her. I guess everybody owes their life to their mother. I mean, <laughs> she didn't give birth to me, you know? But I, I know how lucky I am to have such an incredible mom. <clears throat> so when she arrived, this was the list of my injuries. I had a bruised and swollen left eye. Luckily, the actual orbit was OK. It was bloodshot, but it was all right. Um, I had a fractured right ilium and a fractured right sacrum, which are both hip bones. <clears throat> I had three cracked ribs on my left side, a nasal fracture, and lacerated or deeply cut left kidney. And both of my lungs were severely bruised. Now, the chief concern at this point was my inability to breathe. They were suctioning fluids that I had aspirated from my lungs every chance that they got. And uh, as far as my head goes, the CT scan showed that I had a bruised frontal cortex and a subdural hematoma, which is blood gathering in one of the outer layers of the brain. Now, as long as this list was, there was nothing on it that should have prevented me from waking. So they tried to wean me off of oxygen to encourage me to breathe on my own. Now, the tube that they had down my throat was a soft plastic one. And my involuntary reaction was to bite down as hard as I could, which, of course, stopped all oxygen from getting to my lungs. So my blood oxygen desaturated to 60% of normal. Now, before this, the medical reports state that I'm moving all four extremities. And after this event, they note that I'm no longer moving the left side of my body. So the doctors realized that they weren't getting the whole picture. So an MRI scan was ordered. And here's what they found. The neurologist came in and told my mom, well, we know I won't wake. He has a severe diffuse axonal injury. And my mom was like, what's that? And apparently the neurologist just shrugged his shoulders and said, you get what you get, and closed my case with neurology. So my family did what anyone would do, and they consulted Google. <laughs> now, no, seriously, though, as I go through this, and you would do it too, as I go through this, try to put yourself in my parents' position. Imagine your son or daughter just received this diagnosis. Let's start with Wikipedia. Over 90% never regain consciousness. And those who do wake up often remain significantly impaired. Next, brainandspinalcord.org. 90% remain unconscious. The 10% that regain consciousness are often significantly impaired. And Medscape, most patients, over 90% remain in a persistent vegetative state. Can you imagine? The odds were astronomically against me ever even waking. And even if I did, well, you saw the statistics. So now let's add that to the list. And if this wasn't enough, <clears throat> I also contracted pneumonia followed by MRSA. I look at this list and imagine my mom hearing this rattled off daily. And at first she would say, OK, OK, but he's going to live, isn't he? And they'd tell her, we don't know. So she stopped asking. But 12, days, 12 days after in a coma, I beat the odds. Someone take me to the hearse.